All right, so what I want you guys to do is see if you can fill in this chart with just out of your brain. See what you can do out of your brain. You don't have to know, this is one of those things you don't have to know perfectly because it will only be on multiple choice on the AP test and on our quizzes and tests. So um, it's not like consecutive equal length input value intervals that you need to know exactly how it's worded. So on these, I did leave out the graph of F. Um, it will say that on the choices, I'm fairly certain. Um, but I feel like the main thing you need to know is the first part and the last part. So make sure you've got the transformation correct and the units correct or the factor of the dilation correct. All right, so what we're gonna do um, on the first example, we have um, this graph or this table of F and we have a transformed function and we're going to evaluate the transformed function for certain values of x. All right, and I kind of love this actually. Um, so let's look at example one. We want to find g of one. And so g takes f and does these transformations, like a horizontal dial or horizontal uh, translation by um, negative two units, a vertical dilation by a factor of three and then a vertical transformation by negative one units. But we don't have to write that. Um, we just have to plug one in for x and then just simplify through on the problem. So the first thing you would do is just go ahead and add that one and that two. And then what is f of 3? Mm. 
f of 3 is 5. So it's going to be the y value of f when x is 3. So in the place of f of 3, you're just going to replace that with a 5. All right, and then we'll just keep simplifying. This is going to be 15 minus 1, or just 14. All right, and then we're basically going to do that same thing again for b, except this time we're going to put in negative 2 for x. And then to figure out f of 0, we just go to when x is 0, the y value is negative 1. And then that's going to be negative 3 minus 1 or negative 4. All right. Any questions on that? All right, there is a specific um, standard in AP pre-calculus that says something like understand that the domain and range of a function can change with transformations. Um, so I'm not really sure how they're going to test you on that. So it might be something like this where we're saying the domain of F is only from negative 4 to 9. Uh, we want to figure out the domain of G. So. Um, the domain is only thinking about x, so if we're looking at this transformation, which part of it is going to change the x? Yeah, the x plus 2. So what would we do to this domain for an x plus 2 inside? We would move it to the left, which is, are we going to add 2 or are we going to subtract 2? To subtract. So what we would do is just take the ends or the constraints of our domain and subtract 2 from them. And that's going to be the domain of G. Alright, so let's look. Oh, actually, why don't you guys try example 2 on your own? Are y'all okay? Okay, the back, sorry, some people are still working. I'll wait. So if you're trying to figure out f of zero, you just go to the table, find when x is zero, f of zero will be whatever the y is.
All right, so on the back, we have the same table, so the same function f. And we're gonna do the same things, except we have to write the transform function. So on example three, we know that P of X results from applying three transformations to the graph of F. There's going to be a horizontal dilation um, by a factor of three. So dilation is always multiplication. For horizontal, you're going to multiply inside. Are we going to multiply by three? We're, what are we going to multiply by? One third, good, the reciprocal. All right, so that's the horizontal dilation. And then there is a reflection over the x-axis. So a reflection is always gonna be a negative. For the x-axis, it's gonna be outside. And then there's a vertical translation by a factor of negative four. So that's gonna be a minus four on the outside. So remember, um, if it affects a horizontal, thing then it's inside and the inside lies to you. The outside tells the truth and changes it vertically. So that's it. And now we're just going to do the same thing we just did. We're going to plug 3 in for x. and then simplify it down. So 1 third times 3 is just 1. Oops. Okay. And then we need to figure out what f of 1 is. So we go to where x is 1, f of 1 should be 7. And then negative 7 minus 4 is negative 11. And then we have P of negative 6, so same thing. We're just going to put that negative 6 in for X. One third times negative 6 is the same as negative 6 divided by 3. So that's going to be negative 2. We need to find f of negative 2. That should just be 3. And then that's going to give you negative 7. Okay, so I want you guys to try example 4 on your own. When you get finished, check with me, and then you can just start working on your assignments. <coughs>